Hello, Gibraldo here. I just wanted to do a kind of tutorial on the tape track. I know it's very confusing because if you look at uh, the app screen, it gives you no information. You look at this, obviously it doesn't give you much information other than the, um, uh, the brightness of the lights. Uh, so I wanted to do a quick overview of what the tape track does, uh, each of the dials, and kind of what I figured out over testing, as well as a couple of um, ideas. Uh, to use the tape track for. So, uh, first off, we're going to use um, this beat here uh, for the remainder of the, the video, kind of messing with that. Um, so first off, the green dial uh, is the course uh, speed adjuster. So, um, as you can see here, when you hold down a button, it goes really fast and then it goes slow again to kind of like a tape stop at the end. It does like a, a nice little effect at the end. Um, I'm not sure why they didn't do the whole like green in the middle thing and then go up or down, um, but that's that's kind of just how it works. Um, you keep going and then it'll go fast and then it'll go slow again to the tape stop. Um, that one's kind of useful for doing like scratch effects, that sort of thing. Um, other than that, uh, I don't really use it much. Uh, the next one over here is the um, fine uh, speed adjuster. So uh, what this one does is when you hold down, um, it goes twice as fast all the way up and half as fast all the way down. have it affect everything here. Um, right, so the shift button uh, it highlights yellow what tracks are going to be affected, and that's when you hold shift, you can highlight them, um, unhighlight them, um, uh, whichever tracks you want. Alright, uh, that was the side. Uh, this is a filter, it acts like every other filter in all the other engines, so uh, let's go back to the middle here. So yeah, it's, it's the filter. The red one is a uh, resonance. Um, so this acts like all the other resonance. You can turn it up and have like cool effects when you filter down. So um, and you can hit certain sweet spots to make it sound pretty interesting. Um, so that's cool. Get a resonance. Um, and then there's also a next page, so if you just tap shift, go to the next page. Uh, these first two are the effect sends. So this is the first effect, uh, effect one, and this is effect two. So I think effect one I have a delay. It's hard to tell because it's on three, let's do four. Pretty cool. Um, and then this one's just the reverb for now, but you can put, you know, whatever effects you want in the effects tracks here. Cool. So you can have two effects on the tape track. That's pretty neat. Um, the next one is a pan. So you can go left, you can go right. Cool. And, um, this one here is the, the volume. So make it louder, make it softer, uh, which is pretty useful for dialing in effects. The next uh, is a another page actually. If you hold the track uh, button, get in here. Uh, this affects the note length of whatever you put in here. So um, let's just put one in here. Um, all right, so you can't really hear the effect, right? Uh, so if you turn this up, it'll make the note length bigger. Now you can hear it coming in, and that's shown here with the uh, slower flashing light. You can keep going. And I think that's yeah, that's even longer. Then you can have it actually hold with the flashing uh, white, or you can switch it. Kind of just holds wherever you put it. Um, so let's take that off. So it's holding right here, right? You can switch it over here. Over there, so this is kind of just like a latch 
type of thing. And uh, to get rid of it, you just turn it down, and then you have to push uh, the button again to unlatch, or I guess any button. Um, back to the track uh, button hold. Uh, this one, I don't know if it actually does anything, but I think this is similar to the other ones where it's poly, mono, um, and legato, uh, but I don't think it matters for the tape track. And then uh, this one I think is quantize. Again, you get really just no information at all on the screen, um, and even in the app. Um, I believe that one's quantize, and this is kind of the most important one, in my opinion, and this is the dry wet. Um, so basically you can uh, turn this up here let's uh, let's uh, have a uh, have it affecting the tracks and as you turn this up you get um, more and more of the uh, dry signal going through so I think it's like probably about 50 50 it seems like um, for the end um, so that's pretty cool, and you can mix that in. Um, this is very useful for adding effects to um, kind of ambient tracks, that sort of thing. Um, kind of just add polyrhythms even to um, the current track. It's pretty neat. All right, so now that that's done, so what does it actually do? Um, so it basically listens in to the audio coming from all the other tracks and creates a buffer where you can play it um, along the buffer. This represents time that you're playing at the bottom here. And I think I found something pretty useful. So um, it seems like it's cut up per 16th note down here. So, um, you know, let's just go to one. So these top ones here uh, represents the size of the loop that it's gonna loop over and over again in the tape. Um, so this is 16th note, 8th uh, note, um, 3 over 16, 4 over 16, 5 sixteenths, 6 sixteenths, um, all the way to 10 sixteenths of uh, loop time that you get to play with. So, you know, this is a 16th note, so basically I push it down, you hear a 16th note. Um, you know, uh, 4, so... Um, right here, right? So this is, you know, 16, um, each one representing a 16th note, right? Uh, so I found out that it seems to correlate to, like, this is the first 16th note, second, third, in the buffer per the bar. So as it's going along, after each bar, it kind of resamples and uh, kind of get a new sample set that you can play with. But with, like, 4-4 four, four music, you can really play with this pretty well because um, you know the, it, the beat itself won't move that much you know I have a fourth right here so what I can do is kind of make a beat break and do something like this and it starts here right because this kind of corresponds to that whatever's on this um, first 16th note so this would be like the open hi-hat sound it'll start with so if you can test this out by going to the um, one here, and it'll go, you know, one sixteenth of a loop and bass, open hi hat, snare, um, open hi hat again, bass, snare, or uh, open hi hat and snare again. So that, that's kind of useful to know because it seems like it goes all the way up to the first to here. And that's kind of where it stops. Um, it doesn't seem like you can um, just loop this one part over here. This is that one. What's cool is, um, so say you want like maybe an interesting rhythm in the background or something. So let's just affect the drum tracks. Um, you can go here, do the dry wet. And you can actually make like little polyrhythms by going to something um, other than four or eight. So maybe a third, maybe you start. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, maybe fifth and maybe start on the um, snare this time.
pretty neat. Um, I don't know, seven. Let's start on the uh, uh, open hi hat. Cool, you can make little pilot rhythms. And again, all this is recordable, so if you you know do it like normal, record play, and you can play through it. Uh, you can also make the um, length super long. And you can make like, you know, interesting little polyrhythms there in your, in your sequence. Um, it's pretty neat. Um, other than that, um, what you can do is um, use this guy. This is very cool. Um, so you can make like a half speed drone kind of drums, like half speed drums if you want to do like a kind of like a breakdown or something. Um, so you go here, I think it's uh, 8 does a full, yeah I think 8 does the full um, half a bar length. So. so you can have half speed drums going in the background if you want to. Um, and you know, that also works with, um, say you want, you know, like maybe a low drone or something. Um, and that leads me to the next use that I've seen, like, um, so you have the synths highlighted and you can kind of like scratch the synths a little bit. Then you can do like the tape stop thing right at the top. So the next thing we'll look at is the, um, so this is where it gets kind of interesting. So this is just a simple chord, right? Um, you know, you can make it a drone. Oops. Oh, this is the first time this is actually affecting. I need to get these fixed. Um, you can do like a little drone, half speed drone, or you can do like an octave higher um, kind of shimmer effect, which I'll show you in a second. So I'm gonna do the dry mix up so it's kind of 50-50. Um, go to the other page, turn these all the way up, delay, um, reverb, and this is kind of how you make a, a shimmer out of it. Um, and that's what I used in the, um, in the ambient, and then you can affect, like, how fast it, um, Um, and that's probably my favorite effect that this tape track can do. Um, and again, it can do kind of similar thing. Kind of on the same uh, pitch too. It's kind of like a, a shimmer, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, but I like doing it an octave higher. So twice speed is an octave higher, right? So. And it's all in tune and everything is pretty neat. Um, so I'll show you like, and you wanted like a lower drone.
this is where experimentation too comes along. Anyway, I hope you kind of learned something new. Again, if you have any questions about this, uh, again, I'm not an expert or anything on this, but uh, I found the tape track really interesting, uh, really inspiring, and um, I hope you learned something new. Um, hope you have a great day.